We all think estrogen is just estrogen, which actually we have a lot of different estrogens in our bodies, but the main three that we talk about are estrone, estradiol, and estriol. Estro, estrone and estriol are actually metabolites, products that are byproducts or products that are broken down from estradiol. The only real time that we have high estriol levels in our body is, are, is when we're pregnant. Um, so what does estrogen do? Just about everything you can imagine. Because we have receptors everywhere in our bodies. Everywhere. The, the brain, the eyes, uh, certainly the blood vessels, skin, um, genitalia, obviously, uh, lungs, heart. So there are many different functions in the human body. Uh, so that's why it does protect against heart disease and it does maintain bone, which are two uh, very important um, things that we have to encounter. Most of us are going to die of coronary artery disease and osteoporosis is rampant and it's a, a very silent disease, meaning that if you don't get a bone scan, you wouldn't know that you had osteoporosis unless you had a, a fracture in someone said, oh, let's do a bone scan and there you go. So you don't really feel it. Progesterone, on the other hand, balances the effects of estrogen. It's the more calming uh, hormone. And um, it also has some important cardiovascular effects because estrogen and progesterone balance and work together. Corpus luteum, the egg comes out from the corpus luteum, that's left behind. Well, that actually is responsible for making the progesterone until the placenta kicks in in about 10 weeks. So many times if a woman particularly has a lot of early losses, um, one believes that they need, their body requires more progesterone to carry the pregnancy. So because infertility is so costly and uh, to give progesterone is really um, not that costly, it makes sense to have that area covered regardless of whether that woman actually needs it. It's not going to do her any harm. So that is really why they do it. Um, so it all obviously works with the bone as well. All the hormones you will find out have a, an important role in bone um, uh, stability. So now this is really what happens. Okay, so we have estrogen, so we have progesterone. It's the imbalance. So we have a, a different ratio, right? It's the ratio that really causes a lot of the symptoms. As we have a normal menstrual cycle, there is, okay, the estrogen goes up, we hit mid-cycle, we ovulate, and now this is when the progesterone starts going up. You don't have high progesterone at the beginning of the cycle, but you should at the luteal phase, which is kind of what we were talking about. So when we're perimenopausal, for instance, uh, we're still having these cycles, what many times happens is we have more estrogen in relationship to the progesterone. And one can say that we're operating or living in a world that is dominated by the hormone estrogen, not so much progesterone. It's not balanced. And that's why you get a lot of symptoms. Um, you can get symptoms of, uh, that's the est estrogen excess. And that's what I see a lot of this or the signs of progesterone deficiency perimenopausal women. Now when we get to menopause, we don't have the estrogen, we don't have the progesterone, you'll see signs of estrogen deficiency as well as progesterone deficiency. Very rarely do I see progesterone excess unless you're, being, you're taking in a lot of exogenous progesterone. Well, fibrocystic breast uh, happens to be pretty uh, prevalent in our uh, society uh, and there are reasons for that. Uh, and there are other ways to deal with it, but progesterone is um, fairly e uh, efficient at dealing with some of the problems. I'm not saying that everyone ha who has fibrocystic breasts absolutely needs to be on progesterone, uh, but it many times can help. There are other things to do, like for instance, vitamin E, evening primrose oil, things like that. That's very common. Now testosterone, um, very important for women, you know, testosterone comes to mind and we usually think of men first because testosterone really, I believe, is the ruling hormone for males. But it's very important for females as well, mainly produced in the ovaries. 
uh, but it does, um, it is, there is some production in the adrenals and fat tissue because the fat tissue, uh, estrogen, testosterone, uh, it increases libido, uh, reduces fat. It's responsible for lean body mass, helps again pr protect the bone, but it's good for cognitive function, both males and females. So symptoms of low testosterone, as we were speaking about, decreased libido, uh, decreased sexual sensitivity. This is where the mind comes, the loss of optimism and, and energy, feeling a little low, not being excited about uh, completing a task, uh, certainly loss of muscle tone despite doing exercise, uh, maybe um, thinning of pubic hair, um, fullness of the, of the vaginal tissue. Uh, remember the vagina, the vulva, and the urethra both have, um, or all have um, hormone receptors, including estrogen and testosterone. And dry hair, and also face. Um, if you, um, you'll notice as you go through menopause, your face, the wrinkles, the dryness, very prevalent. Estrogen, very good, but testosterone, important as well.